Today I'm going to show you how we set up our crab traps. We got two new ones. We went to pick up uh, a couple of crab traps for Joyce. She only has three and in Florida you know, have five per person. And the ones we usually get these are almost like heavy chicken wire. Same shelf as the chicken wire. But they don't have any They said so they couldn't get that wire. So, uh, Joy said these were going to be her anniversary, her anniversary present. But, uh, she's got something else besides crab traps. So she buys these red ones. They have red ones. They got them yellow. They got them blue. And the guy told me at a shop that we get them from says some people won't think blue catches more crabs or yellow or red. But we'll see. But these are uh, heavy wire traps. We never had them before. But they, they just set up the same way. So the first thing we're going to do is put a rebar on the bottom for weight because we put them in the rivers, the St. John's and the Swanee. And this, another thing, this one has number three rebar, the fire, the chicken water one. They didn't have any more of that, so this is number four rebar. And I use hog rings normally to put it on, but the hog rings aren't big enough around this. This is number four, so it's half inch rebar, and that's three eight rebar. So I figured I'll just put it on with zip ties for now. And that should be alright. So I'm just going to hook them on with these zip ties. And these should be alright. So I'll get some bigger ones. I'm going to put the hog rings on. I, I sort of like them there. Now we'll do, we got to put a tag on with her name, address, and license number. So we'll put that tag on. Put it opposite the door. I can use my hog rings for the tag. This is just aluminum, scrap aluminum that they use for kick plate on uh, screen porches and doors. So that's all that is. So I had some of that. So we got the our name tag on there. Now the next thing we got to put the uh, line on there, the grab line. And I've, I've got some 5 16 and 5 16 3 8 is a good size. And the thinner, you got less resistance in the water. If you got a strong current, there's less chance of dragging your traps. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the crab line now. We're gonna put a weight, I put weights on ours. I usually put about half halfway up the line. So I'll go ahead and grab the line and put the weights on there. Well, what I'm using for the line is a, a 516 polypropylene. That's what I had, I had a big uh, spool of it. And when you calculate your line, you got your depth of the water and add 20, 25% to it and you'll be all right. And I put another foot on there because I'm going to splice it on. That takes a little more line than tying it. And I usually put the weight about halfway. So this is like 25 foot of line. 
So I'll put it six, twelve. Yeah, that's good. So I'll put it about twelve foot. Now these weights are made for a little heavier line. I used up all the small ones. But it'll work. You just mash them on there if you. So that would work all right with my uh, 3 8 line. So I'll just smash it on there and it won't move. Not pretty, but it'll work. Get the other one done. I actually got some 7 16th group because one time I didn't have just one shot, didn't have anything, so I took that and it's kind of heavy. You get current, and it's we use those on the stone crab traps, but it's pretty heavy. So if you got a lot of current, it's not going to move those stone crab traps, those are darn heavy, but I wouldn't like it on the blue crab traps. And then we'll go out and rig up the uh, buoys. Well, in Florida, the, your, your uh, buoys have to be six inch uh, diameter. And this used to be six inches, this one here. Now it's five and a half. They wear out. You can see my R, which I branded. I'll show you how I brand them in there. So I use these larger ones now. These are about seven and a half inches diameter. So I don't know what they would do if you get stopped. It's the law says six inches. Technically, these are illegal. They're worn out. You can see it. So we'll brand these ones. We'll get the torch going. I made this Brandon iron out of some 3 8 rounds. And to me, it's a lot easier than painting them. And you can see what happened to that buoy. Like I think it went from six inches to five and a half in its diameter. So that paint ain't very thick, so I'd be repainting it all the time. And that still has an R on it. And you can make it fancy. You could actually paint the buoy and put the R in and the white would stand on. But this seems to work. This isn't hard to make. You just, you know, bend a couple, it's like three pieces. Two straight pieces and one new piece. Well, we're going to plug one up and brand it in. Two pieces of the both sides. I did the same thing I did before. This is where the mold is, where you break it off. The other time I did it. I should have done it from the other side. That's all right. It's still legal.
that'll, that'll hold up a lot longer. I guess you could use a, what would you use, a soldering gun or something with a wide tip on it, you could burn them in like that, if you don't make a brand of iron. Here's our traps from Biloxi, a $2.50 uh, part of it called, ring trap, ring. <laughs> They call a lot of crabs. All right, now we'll go out and put the line onto the uh, trap. Well, now we're going to attach the buoy line to the crab trap. And how you do that, you just go through the trap and around the rebar here. And when you pull on this, it's going to put all the strain on the rebar. And rather than tie knots to tie it on there, I like to splice it on. And there's nothing wrong with tying knots. I just enjoy splicing the rope and I think it looks a little neater. And if you notice in our videos, the traps we've been using in the river, they're spliced to the top of the trap, not to the rebar. And the reason that happened, we used to set them in our seawall, in front of our seawall, and there was no current, so there was no need for a rebar. And then we started setting them in the river, and I was using the same traps, and I added the rebar, and I didn't move the buoy line down to the rebar. So one of these days I get around to it, I'm going to move it. I get a lot of comments why I didn't hook it to the rebar, and that's why it's not hooked there. Well, I'm going to splice it around the rebar and a little bit around the uh, trap in case that rebar falls off. I still got it there. So you split your uh, line in three pieces. These were all burnt together. These were melted together so they don't fray out. I wrap electrical tape around the rope and cut it in half. Then I take a butane torch and melt each end and then split it apart. And we go on here, just lay it at your three pieces there like that. And make a little loop and pick up one of the lays in the rope. And put it through. And you skip one, you rotate it, go to the next one, open it, put it through. And go to the next one. And once you get this done, you just repeat what you are doing. Like this. Pull it up tight. That one. Here, pull all tight. You got a good, good start. Let's see. That one. All right. And just, just like I said, you just repeat. You got this one here. You're going to go over this one. And under the one after it. And over, same thing. Over. Just keep rotating it. Now you don't have to do this, you can tie a knot in it. I just like doing it this way. You just keep repeating it. I already got enough splice in it now, it's strong enough. I just got these ends, so I'll just keep splicing it. Just pull it. Trim it off.
And what you also do, normally I'm on a picnic table, on a, I put it on the floor. And to make it neat, you just put your foot on it. Make it tight, make it look nicer. And really, it, when you do use nylon line, it's a, it makes it really look a lot nicer if you do it that way. But you don't have to have nice on a crab trap. I won't catch any more crabs. All right, we're going to add the uh, styrofoam buoy to the uh, trap now. And I didn't mention it before, but that R I showed is putting an R on, but that stands for recreational. So it shows it's a recreational trap. We'll just thread that through the buoy. And we're gonna put a loop in it. But before I cut the rope, I used some electrical tape and then I cut right between the electrical tape and burned the end with that, like a little butane torch. That way it stays together and it won't fray. Take that off the, the tape, throw it on the ground. <laughs> and spread it open. Like that. See all these ends are burnt together. But this is the top. So we put a loop on the top and makes it, you know, this isn't how the commercial guys do it. This is the way we do it. And Joyce can grab the uh, loop at the top to form a loop. I think that size is good. And spread the line open. We'll put that through. And then we go around to the next one. And put that through. Seems like when you do it on film, like you're all thumbs or something. But anyway, this is how you do it. It's going to come out. Good because it's chilly out here. No, that's not that. We're in Florida. When we were in New Jersey, this would be nothing. Right? Right. We'd be saying, we were, but we've been here about 36 years or more. So we're wimps now. Then you can just start. You take this one, go over this one, then go under this, this one here. Over this one. And over this one. And you can just tie a knot, you don't have to do this. I see some people use it look like clothesline. Crabs don't know the difference. Probably catch more crabs than us. <laughs> I spend more time playing with this stuff. Yeah, I don't think a commercial guy is going to do 300 traps like this or so. Maybe we'll do one more to stick up in the air higher. Because you can't reach it.
I'm gonna put everything in my pocket. <laughs> I do the same thing with this. I'll keep it tight. Put it on the floor if you can you know, use easy as a floor. You just roll your feet. And it'll make it a little nicer, especially when you're, you're doing nylon. It does a better job. And right at the top, we put a. I just do an overhand on it, that's enough. And that don't pull through. Then another overhand knot. will stick up in the air and then when Joyce goes to pick it up she's got a handle Did they spill? Yeah, I got them. Another thing I'll go over, you have to have some kind of degradable panel in the side, or this, you know, this is a 3-8 round uh, pine dowel, and this deteriorates and rot, and they do, I had to replace some of these, so they do rot, and that way, on the other crab trap, they just pop open, but I don't know how this will work out, when this lid's down, but this makes it legal, anyway, you have to have that, and you gotta have, each chamber has an escape ring. If you're going to make your traps yourself, some people are going to make their own trap. So you got to have an escape ring in each chamber. And this funnel or throat, whatever, whatever you want to call it, can't go in the trap no more than six inches. You got to have your tag on it with your license number. This is all for Florida. And the buoy, like I said, at least six inches. And that's kind of about it. And they're legal. But you can go online and go FWC and get the actual rules. Before you go out there, you only get stopped and get a ticket. So that's uh, about it. You can't think of anything else, can you? No, just put some crabs in it. <laughs> see if it catches. See if red catches crabs. Right. Yeah, I like. This Maybe time. my anniversary traps won't be any good. Yeah, I like the old-fashioned yeah. one. Right. Those these, ones these are, are a lot. These are a lot tougher. They're heavier. Yeah. And I'm gonna put uh, maybe another zip tie right in the middle in case I don't get those hog rings. So if you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks a lot for watching.